Hello, everybody. I am extremely honoured to be speaking to you today. I have a much simpler talk than a lot of the talks that have happened before, but I hope you find it interesting. I am an amateur diver, and I dive with the Orkney Sub Aqua Club. I have only been diving about seven years, and I've done practically all my diving here in, in Scapa Flow. The club itself has been going since 1968, and I feel very honoured, as it were, to have spoken to a lot of the Orcadians who've dived here for many years and also been able to hear from them what things they've noticed that have changed and in both the diving practices, but in particular about what's happening around Scapa Flow in particular. I'm not a marine biologist and when I started diving seven years ago, I had very little knowledge of marine um, life. And in fact, to be honest, I was very skeptical. I thought I wouldn't see very much in Orkney waters. What I'm going to show you today is um, some of the marine life that lives in Orkney waters. I'm going to do a comparison between the things that I've seen and photographed in Scapa Flow and on the wrecks and compare it with some of the marine life that we see out on the very high energy cliffs around the west coast of Orkney. And I've been surprised there are some differences, but there are many similarities. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some pictures and hopefully explain as I go along. So this first slide is Scapa Flow, a very sheltered body of water. And then underneath the water, we have kind of a varying depth of seabed, but it's fairly silty. And then we have these wrecks that are sitting on top of it. I'm going to compare that with diving on the exposed west coast. This is the cliffs at Newt Head at Westray, which is one of our very favorite places to dive. There's about 40 meters of cliff above the water, and it just goes fairly kind of sheer down 40 metres below the water. So as many of you know, who know Orkney, is that the West Coast is often beaten by big waves, um, big storms, and that's quite a frequent occurrence actually within Orkney. Um, I, as a novice diver, thought there'd probably be nothing on these cliffs, but what I'm going to show you absolutely amazed me. There's an enormous amount of marine life that lives on the cliffs below the waterline. In among the cliffs, we like the gullies, we like the caves. There's an awful lot of different spaces where the marine life shelters. The marine life often likes a gully. You get a, quite a surge of water through it. And many marine organisms actually like kind of quite a lot of current. Um, they're filter feeders and they take their, their food from the current. So this is one of the gullies. In fact, this is at North Shoal, which is a little bit out, but lots of gullies in around the West Coast. But then this is part of a wreck. And I've realized more and more that the wrecks also have gullies. They have caves. They have many features that actually resemble quite a lot of the rock formations. And in fact, in putting this talk together, it's made me really look at the similarities of some of the species and why they choose different places within the wrecks, but also within kind of other places in Orkney waters. We also look at the seabed a little bit. There's a lot of wreckage that's actually on the seabed. This is a really nice wooden beam. There's metal wreckage. There's also wooden wreckage. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of marine life that's actually around it. This is one of, one of my dive buddies. We tend to take pictures of the marine life as opposed to the wrecks. But as you can see, is that it's the wrecks that have, um, and the wreckage that actually means that the marine life is there. This is another of my buddies, this time against one of the, the walls at Newt Head. Much more vertical. And as you can see, again, quite a dense amount of marine life that's there. I'm going to show you a short video. Um, this is on the wreck of the V83, which is one of the destroyers in Scapa Flow. And 
it just to give you an idea of the density of some of the marine life on that actually is on the wreck. These are plumos and anemones, which, as Joe referred to, are really can be fairly dense in some areas of the wrecks. This, as, as you can see, the metal is virtually covered by plumos and anemones, and they're inside the wreck as well as outside the wreck. I'm not quite sure how people looking at the wrecks actually know which bit of the wreck it is because the plumos and enemies actually cover up most of the metal. This is um, on the cliffs. I think this is near the old man of Hoy. As you can see, again, a lot of these plumos and enemies. These are fairly much closed up, and the reason for that is we can't dive the cliffs when there's actually very much kind of movement of the water. We only can dive it really when it's very calm. So there wouldn't have been much water movement over these plumos and enemies. So they're actually, I always think of it as resting or sleeping. However, on the cliffs, you see a lot of greater variety of different organisms. These are two other sorts of anemones that we see that cover vast areas of the cliffs. The white and yellow one is the white striped anemone, and then the pink one is dual anemones, and in particular, dual anemones. They really cover the area very densely, and also they um, are very brightly colored. Again, this is a short video on one of the wrecks. I can't actually remember which wreck it, it was, but um, this time it's showing soft coral. So these are known as dead man's fingers. But again, I wanted to show the video so you can see that big areas of the wreck are covered with these marine organisms. We find dead man's fingers. They're very common throughout the whole of Orkney waters. These are on the cliffs. And again, the ones that are fluffy, as Joe was referring to, the fluffy stuff, they're feeding. The ones that look more like marigold gloves, they're not feeding. They don't have their tentacles out. As you can see on these cliffs, they're not quite as dense as some of the times when we see them on the wrecks. And there's anemones and other marine animals that are actually between the dead man's fingers. I put this slide in because I wanted you to think, is this part of a wreck or is this a cliff? Is that, again, when we're swimming and looking around the wrecks, they can often tower above us. I think um, it was shown this morning, some of the, the wrecks, they're really very tall and very sheer. This, in fact, is a cliff but it gives quite a similar feeling. A cliff covered with dead man's fingers, or is it the side of a wreck that's covered in dead man's fingers? I'm going to show some familiar marine life now. Lobsters, as you all know, I'm sure that there's a lot of lobsters in Orkney waters. The, this one is out in amongst some of the rocky boulders, but we quite often see them on the wrecks as well. They like to be in amongst the cracks the, between the boulders in kind of small caves. There's a lot of habitat like that within the wrecks. And so we'll quite often see, kind of we look inside part of a piece of wreckage and there'll be a lobster inside, either rapidly retreating backwards or trying to threaten us. So this is, again, how a, a lobster, they like to have a safe place to reverse into. Related to the lobster is the crayfish. And we see these, not frequently, but it's not uncommon to see them in amongst the cliffs. 
And I was going to say that, um, oh, you don't see these on the wrecks in Scapa Flow. But two days ago, somebody posted on the, one of the Facebook sites that they'd seen a crayfish on one of the wrecks. I, ha I tried to contact the person, but they didn't say which wreck. But we think there's an awful lot of marine life that's actually in amongst the wrecks that perhaps we never see. Crabs, edible crabs, very, very common throughout, especially amongst the wrecks, just as commonly as out in the rocky areas of, of the Orkney waters. And the velvet crab. This little thing is a squat lobster, much smaller, probably only about kind of three inches long and many of them much smaller. They like the darkness. We see them quite often in caves or in right in amongst the cracks in the rocks. But we also see them, I remember the first time I saw them was underneath one of the block ships in one of the dark things on the ledges. There were a lot of these squat lobsters. Sun stars. Again, I didn't realize there were quite so many different sorts of starfish. This is a sun star. And this one's on turf. Turf is how we refer to the areas that are closely covered and densely covered with different sorts of marine animals. These are all animals. There isn't any seaweed, I don't think, there. There's hydroids and squirts. And then the sun star is on top of them. Joe mentioned earlier about the Luidia, the seven-armed starfish. And they are fast moving, and as you can see here, the brittle stars are running away. <laughs> Many of the wrecks are kind of densely covered with brittle stars. And this is a, again a video to show how dense and how far it goes. And there, the Luidia sitting at the end with a space around it. The cone is the one that I think of as being very densely covered. The whole of the bottom of the boat is actually covered in brittle stars. The brittle stars, they're quite brightly coloured. I'm always amazed when you're swimming and you shine your torch on them, there's many colours that are actually exposed. Urchins, we find them everywhere in scapa flow. Most of the scapa flow wrecks are metal. But this urchin was on wood. The F2 is one of the wrecks in Scapa Flow, and there's a wooden barge that is actually, it, it sank alongside it. And I'm really interested to see the difference in marine animals that settle on the wood as opposed to the metal. So this is turf on one of the high energy walls. There's bryozones there, there's squirts. There's some feather stars. There's an awful lot of different organisms all living really closely together and covering the rock really densely. And this is a spiny starfish that's on top of this turf. Um, as you can see, again, the top bit is sponge and lots of worms. It's a very dense marine habitat. This is a spiny starfish. This is on one of the wrecks. And as you can see, um, this one's on bare metal. But I think there's so much food actually within the wrecks that the, the, the starfish, they move around the wrecks and they can find plenty of food. These are jewel anemones. These ones are pink and at the top there are some hydroids. They're organisms that really, really like high energy cliffs and how they survive when the waves are beating on them, I really don't know. Again, that's how densely they're packed and the brightness of the color. They're another anemone an that multiplies by dividing. So you get areas that are all the same color, but there's orange, there's pink, there's lime green, there's white, and they're just patches. And as you're, as you're diving, even when it's quite dark, you shine your torch and it just lights up the colors of the organisms that are there. We have another coral. This is a hard coral called Devonshire cup coral, which has a calcified skeleton. We see them really frequently on the wrecks. They're not very dense, but they can be quite numerous. And I think they're beautiful. They're quite small, about the size of perhaps of a two P piece. And they have these, again, really bright colors that I find really attractive. These are light bulb sea squirts, which again can be very numerous, 
I tend to see them more perhaps on the cliffs rather than in among the wrecks, but there are quite a few you can see there. Some of the sponges. This is elephant hide sponge, which as far as I know, and I might be wrong here, it's much more frequent on the high energy cliffs rather than actually in amongst the wrecks. And as you can see, it's surrounded here by some dead man's fingers. There's a purple Henry starfish that's in it, in and around it. When we're diving, you have to go slowly because there's so much to see. This one is a boring sponge, not because it's not interesting, it's because it bores into soft rock. Again, much more frequent in amongst the rocky shores and the rocky cliffs than on the wrecks. But this one's the volcano sponge, which I would say is more frequent on the wrecks. It likes dark places. As far as I know, I tend to feel that it's either on the underside or the overhangs on the wrecks. I think the big thing that I notice more than anything is the fact that the cliffs are really densely covered with a great variety of marine animals. It's quite a lot of fish around. This is a butterfish, which you can find in rock pools, you can find along the cliffs, you can find along the wrecks. It's quite a, a common little fish. And the scorpion fish, again, you can find in rock pools, you can find in amongst the wrecks, and we find on the cliffs. They're quite brightly colored, the scorpion fish, and they're often the same sort of color as their background. The wrasse, I feel I see much more frequently near the wrecks. This one, again, it really surprised me. I didn't realize that we had these brightly colored fish in our cold Orkney waters. It's a cuckoo wrasse, and it's in breeding colors but there's quite a lot of them around the wrecks. Cuckoo wrasse, and there's ballon wrasse as well. They're quite big fish, quite slow moving, and they're not easily spooked. They'll kind of almost come up to you and then swim away quite slowly, which I appreciate. I'm not very good at taking photographs of fish. This is a leopard spotted goby, smaller fish, one that likes dark places. We see it often in the cliffs around Coppensay, but again, the first time I saw it was under one of the block ships in kind of on a ledge on one of the overhangs nearly underneath. So they're quite shy fish and they will swim away quite quickly. Underneath all the wrecks, I always try to swim down to the seabed and actually shine my torch to see what's underneath the wreck. And almost always there's a lot of small fish. Um, we think these are very small cod, but it's really frequent to see kind of 50, 100, 200 small fish sheltering under the bottom of the wrecks. And I think perhaps the wrecks are really used by marine animals as shelter. Dogfish, again, quite frequent in Orkney waters. I think of it as a, a fish that tends to be on the seabed, but we see it quite frequently in, in Scapa Flow as well as out um, in the, the rocky shores. But the conger eel, I'm much more likely to see it in amongst the wrecks. A large fish that likes to be in amongst the dark places. And very frequently you can be kind of looking in amongst the wrecks and you suddenly see a conger eel come at you. And I'm afraid I always go backwards. <laughs> I'm not keen on them at all. But I think they're as worried by me as well. So thank you for listening. I hope that gave you a bit of an idea of some of the marine life that you find in Orkney waters. Thank you.